Hey guys, I just wanted to um, make more of an in-depth video on getting started with War Thunder. Uh, seems like there's not a lot of information out there for the person just starting and uh, learning all this stuff is kind of um, just kind of find out for yourself. And there might be some things you might miss uh, or you might make some early mistakes, uh, which uh, I really don't think should be necessary. So... Hopefully this will be a little bit of a resource for anybody that might need the help. First thing we're going to go over is um, the, you want to go to WarThunder.com. It's a free-to-play game. You can download it and uh, set up an account. And this will be the screen that you log into. Uh, we're going to go over this screen because there's a ton of stuff here. And uh, some things uh, you might not know about or you might not understand what it's for. <laughs> Uh, game modes, obviously, a little bit. This is pretty, um, pretty self-explanatory. At the beginning, you're going to want to do all the missions. Um, the first three missions give you reward of Golden Eagles. Golden Eagles, what they are, is the real world currency. Uh, or not the real world, but the real money currency. Uh, so they go ahead and start you off with 200, and I believe... And you start off with 40, so you end up with a total after you finish the first three tutorials of 250. So that's pretty much free money they've given you. Uh, it's probably, I think it's uh, the conversion rate right now is $3 for 500 so it's about two and a half bucks they're giving you. Um, now the advanced tutorials, they give you silver lines. Now this is the currency that you get from playing the game. Um, as you can see, you'll get 30,000 golden lions for completing all of it. I'd recommend doing it. It doesn't take long to do them all. You get a reward for it, and it teaches you a few things. Um, carrier landing and dive bombing being the penultimate uh, lesson, which is probably the most difficult thing you'll learn. So up here, you'll see where your silver lions are and your golden eagles. Um, then that's medals. That's stuff you earn in-game, kind of like achievements. This is the number of planes you have. And if you have a premium account, um, you this will show you how much time you have left on it. Now looking at the menu, uh, there's game options, which does not have the video options. The video options will be on your launcher. Uh, so if you're going to change your video options, look through them there and change them there. The interface uh, is obviously uh, just self-explanatory. Everything in here is pretty self-explanatory. They also have the post effects, which has just uh, been released. I haven't played too much with it. I haven't seen a whole lot uh, that you would want to do. Um, you know, it's probably more for movie making in there. The replay system is pretty darn good. So there's a lot of different things you can do. Um, this will go over your controls. Uh, your controls are very extensive, um, especially if you're getting into full aircraft controls. There's just a ton of options. Um, uh, I would, if you're, if you're not a flight sim person and you're just trying to get in for fun, I would recommend just going with the mouse aim, um, and using your mouse. It's, it's a very good control scheme, the way they've got it set up. Um, uh, but go ahead and you can switch everything you like. Um, in here is a very, very extensive encyclopedia. Uh, they have information on just about anything in the game. Um, here, they'll show you what an Immelman is. Uh, and they'll explain where it comes from. Um, you know, the history behind it. Uh, battles. Uh, airplanes. Tactics. Uh, stunts. So, uh, very, very nice to have. And they're adding to it all the time. So, that'll be... It's just a nice thing to have for uh, any history buff or if you're... If somebody is talking about trying to pull an animal in and somebody that way you know to instruct you on how to get away or change direction or something and you'll know you can find out how they're talking about it leaderboards are leaderboards um actually i haven't looked at the leaderboards uh i'm not on it so i have little interest in it um but yep this is everybody in the game um and their best course see i'm 78 1717 so pretty darn good out of probably 78,718 
Uh, but they have they have it for all of the all of the types of battles, of which there are three. There's arcade, historical, which is uh, more of a realistic control scheme. Uh, you can use your mouse. You, it's very it's also very viable to use your joystick. Uh, and then full real battles are fully, it's a full sim, it's uh, very, you cannot use your mouse, you have to use a joystick. I'm not sure if you can use a controller or not, um, but uh, those are the three game types I would recommend just starting off with arcade, giving it a shot, and then if you're really into the sims, then you know, you'll have a joystick and uh, that'll be what you flock to. I would also recommend if you're not into the sims, give it a shot, it's really good, it's really difficult. So allow yourself to fail a bunch, but it is a ton of fun and very rewarding. Um, and it gives you a good sense of, you know, I mean, without the, without the possibility of death, of just how difficult it is to fly one of these machines in a combat situation. Um, there's also replays. They save, I believe, your last 10 replays, and then you can always, always rename them um, if you want to keep uh, and that's a nice feature. The replays are very good. They have um, a lot of different camera controls, and you can do a whole lot with it. And uh, if you're a video editing wizard, which I'm not, as is made apparent by all of my videos, there's zero editing, very raw footage. Um, you know, you can really make something pretty. There's a lot of pretty stuff out there. Um, you can benchmark. Your computer, they'll give you several options uh, to benchmark, and it'll run through a benchmark, uh, much like you'll see in uh, uh, whatever benchmarking programs are out there. And then, of course, exit. Profile will show you your profile. Uh, it'll give you your breakdown of all of your armies, your master, or your account level, and all of the time you've done stuff. There's also a logbook, which is basically your own scoreboard. Uh, if you want to go for who has the most air kills with your uh, with your thing, and my Wildcat has the most air kills out of any other uh, airplane that I've played with uh, in the USA. Now I can throw in all of them, but I guarantee you that's the one that I have the most with. The Avenger has all my ground kills. That has all, most of my air kills. Um, Hurricane through the Wildcat are my top four planes right now. Oh, the Spitfire Mark II is moving up fast, and surprisingly, for as much as I just like Kitty Hawk, that's up there too. Also, they have medals, which you've earned, which are, like I said, are achievements. Um, they're army-based, um, so you'll earn them for doing, like, air the medal is uh, killing 100 players. So, you know, you kill 100 players, you get a medal. Um, challenges, same thing. Um, just... Uh, I imagine, you know, doing it's 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 harder medals, you know, except uh, this is called a challenge. They have different tiers, as you can see. This is stage two of three landings on carrier two of two. Now I got to hit a hundred to get three. Um, and then skins are unlockables as you play the game. You don't purchase them, um, but they will give you the different skins. Uh, as you can see, there's quite a few skins. And decals are the things that go on the plane, kind of like something like, if this will load, something like that, those wings on there. You know, you can stretch them out, you can rotate them, you can do whatever you want with them. So, uh, there's all of that. Uh, and that's under the profile. Uh, you can also convert your XP, which I'll go over soon. You can change your nickname and change account. Uh, the shop is very interesting. Um, here's where you'll buy the real money currency for the game. You'll spend that. That's those are dollars, at least on the in, for North America. Uh, I'm not sure if that would be also three euros uh, in Europe. Um, I don't know how that works. If so, then the United States is getting a deal because. I think uh, the dollar to a euro is about a buck and a half now, around there. So that's a hell of a discount if it's uh, if that's the case. Uh, which I had seen something in the forums uh, about that, but I'm sure they've got that fixed. If not, they will have it soon. Um, then you can use those golden eagles to purchase a to purchase a uh, 
uh, premium account. And as you can see, you get 200 XP and 150% lines. It's a huge boost. It really is, especially as you're leveling up. Um, I can see the max level being 20. I can see that being um, very important. Also allows to make squads consisting of more than two players. And you get four slots versus the net, the two you would normally get. You'd normally get two slots for decals. Uh, not a big deal there, but the squads is a big deal. And the experience and the bonus in the lines is a big deal. Um, other than that, and as you can see, the more you buy, the more you save. Um, just for uh, giggles, let's see what... 365 days would be 15,200 eagles and to purchase that many eagles 15,000 would be 200 would be uh, roughly about 75 bucks a little less you know you still have 300 eagles left over um, if you took your 250 and spent it 72 then you'd have enough with 50 eagles left over so 72 bucks for a year's worth of premium you know I mean if 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 that's your thing, that's cool. I'm gonna keep premium. I think probably for as, you know as long as I'm playing the game. I think it's just uh, it's just uh, a good a good thing to do. Um, it, it gets you the lions. It gets you the experience, which you know will cap out at 20. So that's not super important, but it gets you the squads of four, and and it also supports the game. Um, and then you can go to the store. These are different packs. Uh, there's different campaigns, um, and they will go ahead and break them down. They'll also, there's also kits, um, uh, I believe this one, the Pacific kit is a $50 kit, the Ultra Starter kit is a $70 or $80 kit, and the Peshka is a $20 kit. You can all see that in game, there's also, you can see that through the website, uh, and that'll give you the prices. Now let's go ahead and here's where the actual game part is done. Uh, we'll start here. This is your automatic repair and rearm. Um, rearm really isn't a big deal if all you're playing is uh, arcades. Um, but repair is a big deal. Uh, the damage model is the same across all modes. Um, whereas the control is easier in arcade. But it's going to cost you a bunch to repair. And, and when you look at a plane, it'll give you an average repair cost. And a time, if you don't want to pay the repair cost, if you uncheck this box to auto automatically repair for free, it, or automatic re repair, and would rather wait, wait the time for it to repair, uh, it's going to take 3 hours, 22 minutes. That's also including the bonuses I get from my crew, which we'll go over. Um... If I take it out of this and put it back in nothing and put something else in here, then my crew bonus would not go in there. But also down here are the different armies. You can see the little ribbons. Um, and these are how you switch between the armies. Um, so, you know, you'll start off with three slots. The next slot will be 10,000 lions, then 50,000 lions, then 200 eagles, then 500 eagles, and I don't know what's after that, probably 1,000 eagles. Um, to open up slots, but you'll start off with three and You'll get three reserve planes. This is one of them this uh, little pea shooter um, And once you start leveling up and accruing some lions You'll be able to unlock More planes as you level up as you can see, you know uh, with this five next to the chevron That means it's a level five. You'll have to be level five in this army not your account but in this army to get that plane. Uh, the account level, as far as I can tell, really has nothing to do with anything um, other than to just be a marker of where you're at. Um, so, you know, it, <clears throat> as I went over in the overview video, just briefly, that, you know, as you level, you unlock these. You can't, if I hit level 16, I can't just buy this. I'm going to have to buy every one in the tree and then buy that. Uh, now, some of these planes. Uh, you know, you can look at in the hangar, all of the planes, or actually all the planes you can look at in the hangar, but um, you can also look at their loadouts, what they what they have available to them. Uh, like the P-47 has all these bomb loadouts, as well as rockets. It'll also give you the modifications slash upgrades. 
um, which you can look at for any plane, um, which is up here in this tab as soon as you click on the airplane you're looking at. Um, and that's the same thing down here. You still get that tab. Now, let's go through the tab real quick. This would be your hanger if you want to look at it in the hanger. That's what we're doing right now anyway. Uh, you can paint it here and go over the decals. So we'll just do one real quick. And um, let's see. Let's put a pinup girl on here and be done with it. All right. And that'll sit there. Um, and, you know, if you have uh, if you have a regular account, you'll be able to do two decals. Uh, if you have a premium account, you can do four. And with these decals, there's a couple different options you can do. As you can see, you can flip it. So you can flip that. Um, okay, so you can flip it. You can two-side it, so it'll be on two sides. Although I found that to be a little bit wonky. Um, so... Uh, just just be careful what you're looking at and uh, make sure it's what you want. You can also resize it. Let me see if I can find something. I want. Oh, these are my new ones. I just got that. Um. Uh, but you can resize it by hitting Shift and then your mouse wheel, and you can alternate it by Alt and mouse wheel. But so you can make it really big you know and you can put it in different places and you can do you can do things with it you know you can make designs that maybe weren't necessarily intended but you can make things look pretty cool if you're if you're patient and you work at it so uh how do I get that off that there. all right and that's the decals. You do that with every plane. You know, it kind of customizes it. Uh, it's not my not my thing, but, you know, whatever. Uh, this will, again, go to your weapons and your modifications. Um, you can see each plane has its own uh, experience. And as you gain more experience, like, um, say I want to get four 1,000-pound bombs. I need the LBC pylons, and to get the LBC pylons, I need 66,000 experience. So I need to play it until I get 66,000 experience before I can equip that, pay to equip it. It's cheap, so it's not a big deal. Um, and then there will be the information, which is just like the encyclopedia, it just gives you information on the history of the airplane. Uh, and you can do that with all the planes. Um, there's also this button here, which is your change aircraft, and this will give you the option to change it to any aircraft. And if you, like as you can see, I have the F2A1 here uh, in this slot, but I've never ever had it in this slot, so if I wanted to put it into this slot, I'd have to pay the, this this fee. It's uh, it's just to train your crew, quote unquote, uh, to put it in that slot. Um, and you'd have to do that with every crew. If you wanted to have the one aircraft bounce between all of them, uh, you'd have to train it in every slot. So, And that's, that's going to be a little bit of money. It's not necessarily cheap it's not over the moon expensive though either until you get late into later levels um so what you're going to want to do is kind of keep the same planes in the same slots just to save that little bit of money and you're going to need it it seems like it's going to come pretty easy early on especially with the premium account but these planes really get expensive let's uh uh look that's almost a million golden lines 980,000 golden lines at level 20. 360 at level 13 you know that's not that's not terribly far you know 13 is not very far but it's, it's going to be very expensive and then on top of that is to put it into one of the slots you can see it's going to cost 73,000 lions to equip it into a slot so you're not going to be wanting to bounce that between four slots you know 73,000 times four is, is is a good bit of money it's almost 300 300,000 and um uh, when you, on a good game, if you're pulling in with a premium account, if you're pulling in, you know, 20 to 30, and that's a good game, 20 to 30,000, you know, that's, it, it, it's, it's going to take you 10 games just to put it in multiple slots. Um, so you're going to want to save all of your lines from the jump. Uh, 
as much as you can. That's why I would recommend turning off your automatic repair and using the time uh, as much as possible. The early ones, it doesn't really matter because these things, you'll start off with a free repairs. So you can see this one has three free repairs. Um, but after that, it takes 19 minutes to repair. I could jump into another army, go play a game, come back, and this will be ready to go. Um, so, but that's that's the change aircraft button. You know, you, you, the other reason you're going to want to keep planes in the same uh, slot, especially bombers, um, is is this button right here, the research button. Now, we're going to go over this pretty, pretty much, but I want to explain why you're going to keep the bombers in one slot. If you're going to run one bomber, you have one bomber slot, and that's it. If you're going to have two, it's going to be more expensive, obviously, but you're going to have it in those two same slots every time. And this is why. Your number of experienced gunners. Uh, if your airplane has a number of experienced gunners, and this is less than that number, you're going to have a minus whatever the difference is. So... Say I had one experienced gunner and there was four gunners on this aircraft. I'd have minus three throughout everything. So I'd have to spend three points worth to get up to make it even. Um, and that's just bad. And as you can see, it's going to cost me to make one more point. It's going to be 600. So to make it a five of 10, it's 600. That starts off at 240. And as you can see, going from, from one to two or from, yeah, from one to two is 240. And then from 4 to 10 is 600. And everything's like that. Uh, as you go up, the more expensive it'll be to increase it. So it's going to take a while to to really do this. Now, if you see this plus 30, that's because what I did... Uh, where is it? Oh, under the qualification in the training tab, um, I have a Catalina. I'm at expert level. Uh, which... As soon as I hit, like, say this, it used to be at, like, 140 or something. I'm at 147. So, uh, the Avenger, once I hit 150, I can pay whatever this is. It'll be, you know, probably 10, 15,000 lions. Uh, and that'll give me a huge bonus every time I use that airplane in this slot. So, you got to think of each one of these slots as a crew. That's a crew of guys. So... <clears throat> This crew of guys accrues experience, and they know how to work on certain planes. And so that's the whole idea behind that. Um, and then you have all these planes. So you're going to want to keep the crews working on the planes they're used to and uh, make sure the qualifications are, uh, you know, something that's going to help them out. That way you're not spending a lot of, uh, a lot of money on stuff you don't need. And this is where you can really, really throw away a lot of points. Um... You know, at one point, I was under the impression that if uh, you do not have a gunner, uh, then any points you put into the gunners will go to your pilot. But I now, I don't think that's the case. And I still don't have 100% clarification, but I'm 99% sure now that that is not the case. So, I put on a whole bunch of points in a lot of my planes, or a lot of my crew slots, for gunners. And it's not going to help them at all. Um, but, you know, you live and you learn. And... Now, what you want to do is, because this is a bomber slot, I'm putting in a bunch of points into, into uh, gunners because I want to make sure that a bomber is slow in the air and I want to make sure that my gunners are, you know, as accurate as possible, as accurate as I can afford to get them. So, and uh, there's just a ton of different stats in here. So let's, let's, pick a, let's pick another airplane other than a bomber and we'll start at the beginning. Um... Your pilot tab is basically your pilot for either your bomber or your single seaters. Uh, and you're going to have the keen vision. If you mouse over them, they'll give you the explanation. Obviously, a lot of it's a lot of it's self-explanatory. G tolerance is if you're in the airplane making a high G turn, uh, your vision will narrow down. You won't black out in arcade, but you will black out in the other modes. Um, but your vision will narrow down, you'll lose your target, and you might lose where you are. Um, it would be very, very tunnel vision. So you're going to want your G-tolerance up pretty high. Uh, you're going to want all of these up very high, obviously. Uh, your stamina and vitality, uh, you know, very, very self-explanatory. Um, your gunners, you know, these are the gunners inside your aircraft. These are for bombers. Um, or, or attack with uh, turrets that they have any turrets. 
Uh, the ground service is an interesting tab. This is the stuff for the crew on the ground. Um, this is the rate of which they repair. And this, and what this uh, goes into is uh, the when you're on the ground and you're not doing the automatic repair, you're not paying for the repair. If you increase this, the amount of time it would normally take to repair your airplane is decreased. Now, like I was saying before, if you take that airplane out and put another plane in and let the airplane just sit in the hangar uh, and get repaired, you won't get this bonus. You won't get this repair speed bonus. It'll just be the natural repair speed that it'll go. So it's really up to you. You know, you can switch the plane out if you really want to have something in there, or you can leave it in there, switch armies, or just not play it uh, on your next match and, and, and get that repair speed boost. Uh, repair rank um, just increases the rank of aircraft that you can repair. Um, reload speed works is... I'm not sure because I only play arcade if that'll help the rearm time. Um, I wouldn't imagine the rearm time would be more than the repair time, so I don't know that that's even an issue. But what this does is helps your reload time in the air, uh, which is a huge deal. It might not seem like it at the beginning in arcade... And actually, I'll get back to that, but in arcade, once you run out of ammo, you reload ammo after a cooldown timer. Uh, your machine guns have a very low cooldown timer, your cannons have a medium cooldown timer, and your bombs have a long cooldown timer. Um, a long cooldown timer if you're in a bomber, a very, very long cooldown time if you're an attack fighter. Um, you know, it could be... Let's see. So machine guns, typically, I would say, average, you know, 12 to 15 seconds. Cannons, roughly 30 seconds. Uh, bombs, roughly a minute 15 uh, on a bomber. A bomber, a bomb on an attack fighter would be about six minutes, five and a half, six minutes. Um, so the, the more you can reduce that, the longer you can stay in a fight. There's nothing more frustrating is when you're behind somebody and... Your guns go click, and you got to keep following them for the 10 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds that it's going to take for you to reload. That's just uh, time you could have been taking them down and moving to another target, or time somebody's going to slide in behind you and protect his buddy. Um, healing spill speed. Uh, I haven't seen any use for it in uh, in arcade. Uh, in the other modes, it might help uh, your your crew might get hurt for a certain amount of time at which point this would act like repair speed for your crew uh, and your qualification is for any any airplane that you've trained in this slot uh, as soon as you hit the required crew level which you get every time you add a point you get more points um, you will be able to increase that and get that bonus like you saw in the Catalina you know I was getting plus 30 bonuses and, and that'll go up, you know, if, if you can see the Catalina, I've got, the next time I can get it is at 430. Um, and then on this tab also, you can also buy experience points. Um, so you earn them in-game, but if you're just impatient or, you know, want to get those, want to get those experienced gunner slots in there, you can purchase uh, experience points with eagles. If you spend 100 eagles... Uh, which is, is it three dollars for five hundred, so you know about fifty cents, sixty cents. Um, you'll get a thousand plus five hundred, so you get fifteen hundred experience points. It's really up to you. It gets expensive because if you'll remember, I went from two forty to what is it, three twenty to three sixty or something like that. You know, to four twenty or something. You know, whatever the whatever the increase is uh, to buy three slots. So, you know, that's that's almost it's probably a thousand just to get there, uh, just to get to the four. Um, so, you know, it, it gets expensive. Now, obviously, these are a lot. The other ones are a lot cheaper, but, you know, even so, this is 50 points every time I want to increase it from 18. So, it, it gets there. It gets expensive. Um, all right, so I, I, I feel we've gone over that, and if you have any questions, please just post them in the comments about that, and I'd be happy to go over it anymore. Um, the two battle is you know your two battle button here you can choose you can choose your army ahead of time or if you're in this window you can also choose it here um this right now is not in effect these uh what you want to play so presumably in the future if i only want to play zero to four ranks and i want to have all my planes zero to four like they are now i'll just check this and uncheck these boxes it's also give you the number of players playing the battles and uh how much time you're typically going to wait 
can also change your server up here. Currently, there's a Russian server and an EU server, and that's it. Um, or you can choose any available. Um, there's also historical battles, uh, which are changed uh, periodically. Right now, it's Germany versus England. Uh, and that will be a battle somewhere that actually took place and you will have one army against another. Right now you can't choose your army, you'll just get randomly thrown into one, but then you'll pick a plane from that army and everybody on your side will have the same army. It's not like Arcade where a Japanese, a German, an American, and a British can all be on the same side and the same type of group will be on the other side. It's just not going to happen. And a full real battle, again, is uh, it's the same thing as a historical battle, except uh, it's the full controls. It's a full sim. Um, as you can see, there's less people playing at the time. There's a more of an increase uh, in waiting. Arcade battles being the most popular at the moment. Uh, and I've I, I would expect that to, to continue for quite a while. It's, it's, it's casual, it's a lot of fun, and it's really well done. Also in the future, you'll see these tabs down at the bottom, the army and the navy, uh, the army and the fleet. Um, what they're they're going to compete directly with World of Tanks, how World of Tanks is coming out with World of Warplanes and World of, I don't know, Boats or whatever they want to call it. Um, and, you know, this is, uh, that's what they're trying to compete with. They're going to have a full army and probably fighting on the battlefield at the same time. Although with the state of airplanes, uh, the planes right now, uh, I'm going to have a hard time seeing how they can balance anything against them. Um, they're just, I mean, you know, it's really good. But we'll see. You know, maybe maybe uh, any aircraft will be very, very strong. Uh, you never know. Um, so let's, uh, let's just jump into a quick game and find out <clears throat> exactly... Well, that's not. Let's uh, let's uh, go over a couple more things. Here's your friends contact list. These are the people you've that are on your friends who you've fought with, um, people you've black listed, and you can search for players. All very self-explanatory. Here's your chat boxes. If I wanted to uh, invite somebody, I get an invite them to a squad. A squad would pop up, as you can see, um, and he's obviously not online, so he's not connected to chat. And it would start the squad, and then we could start. And then there's also your mail, <clears throat> which you get uh, pretty much anytime something happens. You got an achievement, you leveled, you got out of a battle, it'll give you the information, um, I, screw points, things like that. Uh, just about everything. So, uh, let's see what else is there. I'm trying to think without being in game, because there's not a lot in game that you really need to know. Uh, there's probably maybe eight to twelve maps, uh, different different game types, um, but those are all pretty self-explanatory. There's domination. You know, if you've ever played Call of Duty or Battlefield, you'll you'll know what a domination map is. Um, there's ground attack, which you know you got to kill the enemy ground forces first, uh, and I think those are the two game modes. To be honest. Uh, a lot of, some of the maps just turn out to be you know who who runs out of airplanes first so the more slots you have and the more planes you're willing to throw into a battle uh the better your team is um the matchmaking is okay um obviously if there's more people on there's it's a better matchmaking system i find after you hit level five you're going to start really seeing a whole bunch of stuff um and that might just be that there's not enough people above level five to really fine-tune that so uh, just expect that um, and it's not based you, the matchmaking isn't based on like see my squad rank is seven but if I go to a, what I was playing earlier um, my squad rank drops to four so that's what my rank is you know going into these battles and that's based on the person in the squad whoever has the highest plane. so you know if there were four people in the squad and everybody was a four or below the squad rank would be four if everybody had a, if somebody had a 12 and the rest of us had fours then it'd be squad rank 12 and we'd be matched up against somebody like that um uh, you know so and that's and that's stuff you'll have to get into and find out we can go through some of the planes real quick um 
that you'll see at the beginning. Uh, if you're if you're into bombing, if you if you think you want to be a bomber, I would highly recommend going with the American tree. Uh, I think they have the best bombers at level three. You'll get a Catalina. Uh, this thing is tough. It can carry a ton of bombs. I think you start 16 100 pound bombs. They're small, but you get 16 of them, so you'll do a ton of damage. Um, and the, I think you can ultimately carry four 1,000 pound bombs, which are huge bombs. Uh, the the Avenger here is one of my favorites. It carries four 500 pound bombs. Um, you can also carry a torpedo. A lot of these bombers can carry torpedoes. Uh, and then, of course, you know they've got we've got the B-17s and the B-24. Um, you know, so in these things. Uh, you look five eight five hundred pound bombs with eight turrets uh so remember that gunner screen we're gonna need to have eight gunner eight uh trained gunners so it's gonna be tough but definitely these are the i think these have got to be the best bombers in the game um i haven't flown them so i couldn't tell you for sure uh a close second on bombers uh, is britain they have the Wellingtons, which are very good bombs. You can see 250 times 10, um, you know, or one 4,000 pound bomb. Nine 500 pound bombs, so that's pretty nasty. Um, the thing I find with these guys, I've, I've, I've been using this a good bit, uh, is that they're very paper thin. So I'm hoping the Americas aren't like that. Because uh, Britain's Beaufort uh, and Bowfighter are very, very beefy very tough to kill same thing with america's a20 so it might be that these b17s are are a bit squishy as well um so we'll find out i'm um, hoping they're more like the catalina and that they're pretty tough to shoot down uh, i haven't actually i've come i've seen one in game and i haven't really come across uh any others um all, america also has some really 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 good fighters um, they are a well-rounded, um, well-rounded, I think. Um, their F4s, they do, they have really good turning, the same thing with their Buffaloes. Really good turning dogfighters. Um, F6 is kind of your bomber, boom and zoomer. You know, it's fast, it's gonna hit quick and move on. Uh, same thing with the Corsair. Uh, horrible, look at that turn time, 35.7 horrendous but it's fast and it does a ton of damage um so you know it, you're gonna run and zoom and do a lot of damage and that's and that's basically the name of the game for for the states except for the f4 the uh, and the f2s uh the the air cobra is kind of it, it it can turn it can do a pretty decent job turning but you don't want to get caught it's a fastish airplane so you're going to want to be moving the reason you don't want to get caught is it's probably going to be your first plane in the uh, U.S. Air Force that's going to have a cannon. And you're going to love a cannon. They do tons of damage. Uh, you know, 37 millimeter cannon, no less. It's it's a very big cannon. So if you start hitting stuff with it, you see the ammo is only 30. but So you'll have to be a little bit uh, judicious in how you shoot it. But trust me, you can take things down in one and two shots. Uh, just about anything if you can hit it in the right spot. Um, and then you get your P-47, which uh, obviously I haven't hit, but as you can see, the turning time at 25.8 seconds is great, but it's 429 miles an hour and has a one-second burst mass of 4.85 kilograms per second. That's how much ammo they're throwing out per second. 4.85 kilograms. Um, so that's a lot. It's a ton. Uh, you know, it's, it, it, it's a lot. But as you can see, it's also... Uh, average repair cost almost 10,000 lions uh, 10 days to repair um, so yeah there's it's 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 it gets really kind of silly I think with the repair the economy I think is still in flux I think they need to tweak it you know 10 days I mean versus the p63 at 17 hours. you know I mean that's one day you know what else is 10 days 13 days for the you know, that's 12 days. What's the Sabre? Sabre's 18 days. This is the jet. Um, you know, I mean, you know, that's it's just, it's crazy. You know, I mean, I guess, you know, if you're going to fly them, 
You know, I mean, you're not going to make a lot of money. It's probably a balance issue. I think maybe 18 days is <laughs> is, is a long time. But, you know, maybe you have, I don't know how much the, uh, the points and re time reduction bumps it down. It might bump it down quite a bit. So, you know, as you get on, that's probably something you're going to want to focus on in your training. Uh, but that's that's the Americas in a nutshell. You know, give them a shot. I really, personally, I really enjoy the Buffaloes. I like the F4. Um, I really like the Cobras. Uh, they're they're fantastic little. They're fantastic planes. I mean, they're just they. I, I run through and you know pop shit. It's gone. Uh, and and the Avenger being my favorite bomber, four five hundred pound bombs. It's probably down to roughly a little over a minute. Cool to cooldown timer it's got two turrets in the back one on the low and one high and it's a single engine bomber so it's a little bit more lower profile uh and a little bit more maneuverable than something with two engines uh the germans not a fan if you've seen anything i've done not a fan but now i've hit level six and this is where they really st should start to shine with the bfs coming out uh the one he 112 that i did like was the level four one the bo um, that one's not bad. Uh, the uh, where is it? The 202 at level four is not bad. Uh, everything else is is completely horrible, horrible. They have terrible bombers. Um, they're not really bombers. They're like attackers, so they handle horribly and they carry no payloads. Um, they just have big guns uh, and they go fast. But you know who's scared of that? To be honest, I mean it's not really. They're not that scary. Um, you stay away from them, or you get behind them, you know, and try not to get killed by their turret, which isn't terribly hard, because they don't have very many turrets. Uh, but their BF, BF-109s are amazing. Their Messerschmitts, of course, their jets going to be great. Uh, and their Focke-Wolfs. I mean, you know, I mean, you're not going to... You're not going to find a much better airplane than a Focke-Wolf 190. Uh, that's probably one of the best airplanes in the game. Uh, just powerful, fast, a real boom and zoomer. That thing will come in, shoot you down, and be gone before you even knew it was there. Uh, very, very good airplane. Uh, same thing with the BF-109s. They range anywhere from a boom and zoomer, and there are a couple of them that can be dogfighters as well. So learn them. I don't know them all. Uh, I couldn't tell you which is which, but you know, I knew you know to be careful of them. Uh, next is the Russians. Russians are currently... Uh, thought to be overpowered by a lot of the forums. Uh, a lot of the people think they're a little bit overpowered. I don't think they're overpowered. I think they're very, very, very strong. Um, early, I think they're overpowered. Their reserve aircraft have the best one-second burst mass of anything. I, it, nothing else even comes close. Um, I think the Americans have a pea shooter that does 0.77. All of theirs do 1.11. Uh, level 1, their Chaika is great. Uh, it handles even better than the reserves and it's faster um, and does just a touch more damage their I-16 at level 2 is really good um, and their lag has a cannon at level 3 So, and, and this handles pretty well uh, and it's pretty fast you can see 352 miles an hour 21.5 second turn time it's, it's a good airplane it's a very good airplane um, and then it only gets better um, you got your yaks those things are disgustingly good. They are really, really very good. You, if you see a Yak on the field, you have to watch out. And the Yak 9T at level 8 has a 37mm camera, cannon. Um, <clears throat> the LA-5N is also something I found out that uh, you had better not get even close to. I mean, look at that. 403 miles an hour at 18.5 second turn speed. You know, that's there's, there's planes that run half as fast that don't turn that well um 20, two 20 millimeter cannons as well will also shred you uh then they their their bombers are really really quite bad though um and also all of their planes all have very low ammo counts as you can see 200 400 ammo and 120 cannon ammo so you know it's i think that helps to balance them out um you know, it, it does a bit. See, it's only got 30 rounds of cannon ammo. So, you know, it, it's a little give and take. They, they they expect to get in there, shoot something down with a minimum amount of bullets and get the hell out, you know. Uh, 
they're 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 uh, half-ass. They're attack bombers. They're attackers slash bombers. They're good planes, but they don't really carry much of a, a bomb loadout. See, four fifty kilogram bombs. They can carry maybe two hundred kil kilogram bombs. You know, it's not a lot. You're not going to do a ton of damage. The IL-2 is a good is a good one. Uh, it's got a ton of options. Um, you know, to carry rockets, rockets and bombs. But you know, 400 kilogram bombs. You're not going to do a ton of damage. But it's fine. It's got great great weapons. It handles fine, and it's pretty fast. Hey, 258. It's not bad for an attack bomber. Uh, the IL-2M. You know, more of the same. Um, <clears throat> but they're actual bomber bombers. Not even worth looking at. Uh, I'm not going to spend any time on these. I think they're a complete waste of time. They're big, lumbrous. They have decent turrets, but their bomb loadouts are completely useless. Uh, Britain, on the other hand, is very, very diverse in what they have. Uh, but it's a, it, what they have is diverse in the fact that you've got your hurricanes that go into your typhoons. Two very very different aircraft. Um, Hurricane is kind of a dogfighter slash boom and zoomer. Um, it's very early on at level two. You get uh, this one. It has eight machine guns, and the Mark II at three has twelve machine guns. So it's going to do a ton of damage. And against higher level airplanes, it does really well because it still moves fairly fast and it can still turn fairly well. Uh, it does neither. It's not super fast and it doesn't turn incredibly, but you know it does both moderately well and it's got all those machine guns so uh with a lot of ammo so you're going to be able to lay lay the herd on if you can catch them um and the typhoon is the same you know i mean except you know what's uh faster uh and you know you're gonna have the mark the mark 1a with your machine guns and with the mark 1b with your cannon um now your dog fighters or your spitfires uh and the spitfires are i mean just sublime they really are uh the mark one is okay because of its eight machine guns it does fairly well uh i can get enough kills with it it handles like perfect i mean look at the turn time 15.6 seconds it's like a it's like a, a biplane um mark two is 20.4 second turn time and to say that that's disappointing is crazy because that's better than just about any other fighter at this level, at level 6. Not only that, you get four machine guns and two cannons. And it only gets better. Uh, you get more machine, more speed. Every every iteration just seems to add more speed. The Mark 9 I'm really looking forward to. It's got a ton of speed. And they reduce the turn time back from 21 to 18 and a half while maintaining its uh, ammo load. So, or its, its armaments. And their bombers are good. Uh, we, we, like I was showing you, the Mark, the Mark, uh, I'm sorry, the Wellington has uh, 250 times 10 bombs. Um, it doesn't get any better than that, really. The Lancaster uh, is probably the end-all, be-all of the bombers. Um, but, you know, that's level 16. It's going to be a while before you get to it. And early on, the Beaufort, uh, the Blenheim and the Beaufort, very good ones. I prefer the Beaufort. But, uh, you know, or 250 pound bombs um or a torpedo or, or eventually if you unlock the which i could do but uh if you unlock that you get two five pound bombs but it's a tough tough airplane uh, it's only got the one turret which is a kind of a drawback but it is tough it is tough to take down uh, and if you put points into that turret he's gonna he's gonna do a good bit of damage low fighter has four cannons on the front uh and then the mark and has four cannons and six uh, machine guns. So, you know, <clears throat> this thing is not, you know, it's not going to dance on the wind. It's just, it's not that terribly maneuverable. But it'll come zooming in at you, shoot you down, and just keep on moving right through you like you weren't even there. Not only that, it's a real pain in the butt to shoot down. It's tough. It's got that turret. It's just, it's no fun. It's its just, it's such a tough plane. It's just no fun. I hate seeing a bow fighter on the on the map not a big fan of flying it because it's not terribly maneuverable and that's kind of what i do but it's a very very good airplane something to be feared on on the field uh and finally is the japanese they are <clears throat> excuse me they're they're 
all about maneuverability. Um, they have decent armaments. You can see at level 4, you get this uh, zero with a pontoon on it, which seems like it'd be ridiculous, but it handles great. Uh, they're not terribly fast, but it's got two cannons on it uh, and two machine guns, so it's got great damage. Uh, and it only gets better from there. You take the pontoons off, and it gets faster and handles better. So, and it does more damage. So, you're going to do that. Uh, these KI... KIs are great. Uh, I, I don't know what the KI stands for, but uh, um, this thing is slow. <laughs> it really is. It's really slow, but it, I mean, I've never turned anything. He, the Hayabusa, it says 21.4 seconds. I can't believe that's the case because nothing. You can't, you can't lose these things. These things will stick on you like glue. And the KI-61s are not much. Are not much different. They're. Uh, they're definitely going to stick right on top of you. They just, they're so, the, the thing is, they're kind of floaty in the nose, but, um, you know, it, it's almost like trying to fly a leaf. It's, it's just, it's, it's a lot of fun to play. They're, they're the ultimate dogfighter. I don't think anything can out dogfight it. Maybe not even, not even the Spitfire. I don't think, I think these can outdo a Spitfire, um, uh, if with equal pilots behind them. So, uh, definitely, if you're into dogfighting, you check these out. Check the Japs and the Brits out. And if you're uh, into Boom and Zoom, you're going to go uh, with the Americans or the Russians. And if you want to mix between the two, uh, and don't mind slogging it out for the first six levels uh, with some really frustrating games, with some really frustrating airplanes, These all these... All these Italian airplanes, just, I mean, the worst airplanes in the world. Their noses never stay put. They're the worst things to try and turn and aim at the same time. You just can't do it. Um, but if, if you're willing to stick it out, they had, they do have some of the best planes in the game with the, with the BFs and the, and the Falk Wolves. Um, and these, and it's just a good mix, good mix. So, uh, if you're, if you're in there and you're trying them out, stick with it. It'll get there. They, they got some great airplanes. Um, and they've got a good mix of boom and zoomers versus dogfighters. So that's going to be it for me today. And uh, if you do have any questions, just, <clears throat> just throw it in the comments. And um, I'll be happy to answer anything that pops up. And if you see me in game, my name is SOB. Go ahead and shoot me an invite. I'd be happy to play with you. Thanks.